Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Alika Manova Yoga. I just finished the class, a little sweaty, uh, but I wanted to quickly share a few things about hormones, since I've been talking about hormones, although I feel that if we talk about hormones, we just generally talk about health. In menopause, even though there can be tweaking with what kind of foods and herbs and movements we do, at the same time, we still, all the other things that we have done apply, maybe less intensity in certain things. But anyways, hormone balance and certain tools, techniques, rebounding is fantastic. Moving the lymph is fantastic. Anything that will help you to move the lymph is fantastic. I had a rebounder many years ago. I used it for many years and then it got packed in my garage. It's still there. I won't unpack it. It might be too old, but I, either way, I'm planning on getting either my rebounder going or a new one. Rebounding is great, but for bone health, which is one of the things that we have to have awareness of with, with menopause, with estrogen um, uh, levels dropping, one of the symptoms is lower bone mass. To a degree, lower bone mass in elderly is an actually a normal occurrence and in some ways, probably a sign of longevity when it's in a healthy organism because it's moving into a different phase of life but excessive bone loss it's not very good so um, higher impact um, a movement it's very important we do a lot of jumping if you are good with jumping your joints everything is good with jumping never stop if you have stopped at some point then there is ways to work your way into impact movement um, so that your body is not deteriorating from lack of movement. Movement is everything. We build muscle from movement, not from eating protein, not from taking supplements. Okay, maybe certain peptides build muscle as some uh, naturopaths claim, but we build muscle through movement. I think movement should be non-optional. There might be possible ways of some people have specific very specific needs of how to move and there may be a custom program for them because they have specific needs, specific injuries, uh, maybe um, osteoporosis or other things and the movement has to be modified. But healthy or non-healthy people, all I think movement is non-negotiable. Now, with, um, with movement, as I said, Higher impact movement is really good. Uh, strength building is really good with resistance, with body weight, with uh, um, this I've been including a lot of those uh, uh, bands. They're good for traveling, etc. They're fantastic for added resistance. Um, also weights, um, added weights, and you can increase the weights in your home gym, bring uh, either the place that you can add plates onto your uh, weights. Uh, but if we combine the styles of movement, such as fluidity, circular movement, fluidity uh, conditions your fascia, um, weak fascia, clumpy fascia is no good, even if you're strong, because it's lower circulation, brings less circulation, less um, food, blood to the muscles. Overall, we, it results in um, strength loss. Um, in the finder, I see my little, my mic was on this side, so my, <laughs> I'm a little twisted, but I wanted to quickly come on. So rebounding is great. Vibration plates are great. I'll try to put the different styles of movement because I've talked about them for years and years and years, and I teach them all. Pilates is really great for really, not Pilates, somatic movement. It's really good for targeted aware connection to muscles. Our conscious connection to muscles, isometric contractions, somatic awareness, very important, especially if we're going through changes in life. Movement on earth, on the ground, I felt very out of, of my own how I am when we moved. I was just out of my element, felt not quite right, and that's why I started studying menopause, uh, hormones, etc. because I movement, uh, moving from a house to another house, from a state, long, prolonged moving, really draws me off at any age. 
but I started to realize that the most healing thing personally for me above even yoga and herbs which I love herbs and I love is the ground moving on the ground planting something it's so healing being in nature hiking maybe I haven't hiked so much because I have a seven-year-old that wouldn't hike so that's that but I do my own working now sauna sauna is really good for hormonal health you with one disclaimer lately I've been seeing more and more precautions about if you have breast implants or any type of silicone implants and sauna they don't have this on the insert but apparently they do melt and people that have the worst symptoms of you know um, illness uh, I don't know if I can say everything here so I'm pretty limited in how I speak but um, are the people that had implants and a lot of and did a lot of sauna because they are not meant to be put at that temperature so with that disclaimer sauna is fantastic here it's it reduces hot flashes it can help with weight gain uh, sleep quality it can balance the hormones especially because sometimes hormonal imbalances from a stagnant overburdened liver or for circulation which we address with um, my movement and yoga classes sauna is amazing for heart health obviously adaptation uh, to the thermal uh, thermal challenge um, it's fantastic for cognitive function which is one of the problems with hormonal imbalance menopause it's cognitive cognitive symptoms such as uh, brain fog etc um, soundness improve blood flow strengthens the immune system reduces stress decreases toxins the toxin decrease it's really important sound alone is not important binders have to go with uh, everything we do nowadays because levels of metals in the soil in the air in in the food unfortunately in the papers straws are very high and we uh, the reason i believe why women have so many menopausal symptoms and back in the day they didn't it is not because women didn't live long enough they did that is absolutely a falsity when they say women never live long enough to experience menopause that is not true and we all know it because we all know Maybe we don't all know it because we forget simple things, but we all had grandparents and mythology and all of that of really long-lived people. I've had a lot of grandparents and way back. Um, so it is not because of that. I do believe that the female, human female currently at this point in her life, for whatever reason, lives past her reproductive years for half of her life and that's been for the past hundreds of years for a reason there is a spiritual reason as well because we become more of ourselves more contained um, but we have to do it healthily and the reason why there is more symptoms now is because the more toxicity in an organism uh, the poorer the health of the liver the, poor, the, the worse the um, hormonal symptoms so one way to discharge a lot of that static static toxicity static charge in the body is the earth the ground there is i have mentioned so many things that are color therapy no colors light therapy and uh, uh, infrared or sunset therapy because the infrared rays all of those things are extremely helpful you have to find your kind of combination of things that really help you and you can easily do without them burning your schedule your routine you can incorporate them say you take a walk during sunset that is it for you you get those things you discharge static electricity you get the rays you balance your circadian rhythms your melatonin production is enhanced etc etc you sleep well then everything else flows from there rebounding is great but vibration plates seem to have a different place here because they are more about bone building strength training is about building uh, bone building fluidity is about bone building in a very indirect way because we work on the fascia the fascia supplies the muscles and the bones with um, nutrients so fluidity and flexibility are really important you cannot just work on straight up lifting weights that is 
never good advice never good advice for any age you can do it but in combination with the other things um, compound movement functional movement um, mobility drills all of those are fantastic um, that is that is uh, 10 minutes uh, that is what I wanted to talk about quickly about the types of movements that can really improve enhance your life um, the movement improves the health of the liver liver is what's going to give you better symptoms good liver is going to give you better symptoms in every area in your life especially hormones um, and emotions because if we uh, deal with any type of uh, short temperedness anger irritability we gotta pay attention to the liver it is not necessarily that we eat junk food it can be just because the water the soil is polluted it's not very all that simple uh, but the reserves for the liver besides sauna and movement the reserves for the liver milk uh, so is very good um, yellow dog psyllium dandelion apple pectin citrus pectin uh, um, glutathione those things are great for the liver there is a lot more bitters the bitter herbs are for the liver think old school uh, aperitifs you know back in the day people used to drink those aperitifs um gentian and all those herbs that were put the very bitter herbs were put in alcohol and then they would drink it after dinner that was medicinal there was a little bit of alcohol because of all the tinctures and extracts you can have alcohol is one of the best extractor and best delivery system so if we don't have problems with alcohol a few drops of alcohol tincture i feel are better than other types of um, extracts for example glycerin anyways is processed by the liver in the same way as alcohol so it's not necessarily that much better i do glycerin too but there is a, a variety of herbs that are bitter and fantastic on a diet level greens are bitter celery is bitter those things also uh, if you include them in your diet are fantastic for the liver health uh, functioning liver can control can balance your emotions so those are kind of the things uh, deep sleep you can count down with reishi i really love reishi as a nerve um, lemon balm is also good reishi is kind of my thing you have to find your thing that allows you to sleep when you sleep you detox when you sleep your heal. so those are the elements we gotta move we gotta sweat all of those things add add into one uh, into one routine uh, but anyways this is it from me just a kind of continuation on the rebounding and on building bone oh building bone i that's very important uh, the diet and the body has to be in an alkaline state i know people say this is bs i have to tell you that you have to look at the studies so i'll list again that study if a diet is very acidic the breaking down of bones goes faster than the building in of bones and the older we get the process deepens when you're young in general you're going to be building bones anyways so protein in general is not problematic unless it's animal protein and in excess it acidifies the body Higher protein intake in people that are sedentary also leads to bone loss. If you're very active, you increase a little bit the protein and you keep the body in an alkaline state. So plant protein to me personally, that is just something that I will apply for myself is obviously way more efficient in building bone. Um, and um, as I said, if movement builds muscle and movement also builds bone. Fascia helps with both building a healthy fascia builds muscle builds bone. So it's not very simple. It's not just uh, You know calcium builds No, magnesium is very important in bone building. There is calcium supplements from uh, coral reef uh, from coral um, Sea coral uh, that are interesting and there is interesting studies on them but gr greens are very good for calcium uh, they, uh, having adequate doses of magnesium boron very important those things are very important vitamin d which is sunlight and movement all of that is very important in bone building because the way they uh, right now explain it is that bone loss obviously is no symptoms until it's kind of already progressed 
And the one thing that really provenly helps to build bone is that progesterone cream over the counter that John Arley recommends for people that have symptoms, not for everybody, but for people that are stressed out, can calm down, uh, have uh, headaches, uh, anxiety, those types of symptoms of low progesterone in their late 30s or 40s, 50s. Progesterone cream shows in a span of three years to build actually bone. Estrogen just halts bone loss, but doesn't create osteoblast. Progesterone tends to build bone. So it is kind of promising, kind of interesting, not something to completely ignore, even though it is a, a synthesized plant molecule that is bioidentical to human progesterone, but it is interesting, especially for people that may actually need it for calming, for sleeping, uh, for better moods, it's called a happy hormone, uh, so it's interesting. Progesterone also can be balanced by Vitex, by black cohosh, um, uh, oh, soy also can, uh, soy uh, isoflavones or uh, soy uh, protein can also stops, um, stops the breaking down of bones, bone resorption. So those things are all uh, tools, there is a variety of natural tools that we can use besides movement and herbs and foods that all can be extremely powerful if done in a, in a smart way. But anyways, that's from me. If you want to add something uh, to the discussion or have more questions, um, place them below. I'll talk to you soon. Namaste.